How you doing YouTube? Matt, Mass Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. We're diving into some aged, hopeful, delicious, Belgian cellared goodness in the form of Parish Brewings. Uh, this is their Cellared Annual Ale, Abbey Reserve 2000. I don't have 16 fingers, 16. Um, let's see, uh, Parish. Uh, I've had a couple beers before. I think they've all come from Cory. Uh, actually, no, I think one, I did get one outside of Cory uh, that I might have actually even reviewed. But they're down um, that way. They're known for their envy. They're known for their ghost in the machine. They're known for their hazies, but I've never had anything kind of malty and stuff like that um, from them. So I'm kind of super excited to dive into this sucker. Um, as far as what it says on this bottle itself, it says Parish Brewing Abbey Reserve Cellared Annual Ale, uh, bottle conditioned. And uh, on the side here, it says Patience. Um, Abbey Reserve should be saved and shared. Brewed only once per year and with ingredients true to style, our Belgian strong ale is characterized by a rich character of yeast sourced from traditional monastery brewery in southern Belgium. Um, naturally carbonated, it will age gracefully when cellared. Uh, 2016 vintage, done and done. Awesome label, simple, to the point, nothing too crazy. Beautiful purple wax top. Let's dive in. I mean, I'm really very kind of... I'm not, I want to say hard on, uh, on American Belgians. I just, I grew up in the Belgian beer world. Uh, that's how I got into beer. Um, so I'm very um, particular about my Belgians. Uh, I want them to come off more traditional like. And a lot of them tend to come off a little bit too, I don't know, a little bit too sweet, a little bit too candied. Hopefully this one is not that. Oh, good God, look at that. I mean, I'm, I'm rocking that Dirty Glass Mafia, as you can see wholeheartedly, but uh, give it a swirl, get rid of those little uh, nasties floating around. And, man, I'm going to tell you what right now. If this beer tastes not fantastic, I'm going to be really, really disappointed because you're talking about, they're talking about Abbey Reserve. I'm assuming they're going for a quad. I assume that before you open the bottle, but looking at it now... This is exactly what I want quads to look like. I mean, it has this rich, creamy, it's hazy. It's hazy like a New England style IPA, but in a malty area. It's got this rich mahogany brown color to it. That head had a creaminess to it, but now it's starting to dissipate and get this kind of kind of glass clinging, rocky craziness to it that almost all quads, almost all true Belgians really do have. It has that beautiful head on it. It has that beautiful, nice, hazy rich darkness i mean this is off to a good start look wise on point let's get a nose <sighs> this is the shit i love yeah i mean it's gonna hit all those points that i mean i can literally just go into um, you know, uh, Michael Jackson's uh, writings or videos, or I can go into anybody who waxes poetic about Belgian beers who knows infinitely more than I do and, and, and pull out all the bits and pieces of some of the greater uh, Belgian quads out there. Um, you're getting your rich dark fruits, you're getting dates, you're getting plums, you're getting figs, you're getting all that kind of stuff in there. You're getting a soft kind of caramel vibe that doesn't get close to even being sweet. Uh, there's a big bready component. Um, uh, that The way that yeast is rich and drying and kind of bounces off that Belgian candied sugar, which comes off just beautiful. It doesn't come off like brown sugar, burnt brown sugar, Americanized sugar. It's fucking amazing. Um, you know, plums. I mean, I can just keep yammering about all these fruits and these sweetness, but how it's so balanced and, and there's an inherent dryness to it. It's like, it's like, a, it's like a, a non guilty piece of bread wrapped in delicious fruitiness and you know, fruit bread sounds disgusting, but in this instance, it's not. Um, yeah, this smells exactly the way I like my Belgians to smell. Let's see, it's got two down. The look, the smell, let's see what it tastes like. Cheers. That's delicious. That's delicious. That's a delicious, that's an amazing beer. That's an amazing beer. Um, it's sweet. It's supposed to be sweet. It, 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 it's probably just a, a skosh 
sweeter than perfect. But I kind of dig it. Um, big, rich Belgian candy sugars. That dryness of that yeast is still there. So it balances off um, that sweetness. So there's a spiciness to it. I don't even know if I'm getting that from the hops. But there's a slightly spicy component to it, which I dig. Kind of adds a little bit of American hupspa, um to the beer. And uh, brings out something a little bit that you know is not traditional. And I kind of dig it because it, it plays very, very well. Um, the mouthfeel is absolutely fantastic. It's spot on exactly where a quad. This is a quad. I mean, they talk about a Belgian... Abbey Reserve. This is if they didn't. If they're calling it a Belgian dark. Then if anybody calls it a Belgian dark or something other than the quad, they're wrong. Um, let's see. The cool thing is a nice, subtle, meaningful amount of oxidation. You're like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? Oxidation is bad in beer. People tell me that. People who don't know about beer, people that know about beer, everybody in between. Dude, oxidation is not a bad thing, especially in certain styles. Belgian quads being one of them. Sure, you don't want it to go just straight up fucking cardboard paper bag insaneness. But a little bit of soft oxidation in the beer opens it up. It's a debate. Some people, you know, the purists will say that's a bad thing. It's kind of like putting like a sliver of ice in a really good scotch. Some people will want to chop your head off, but other people who are just as credible will not. Um, it's kind of the same thing. It, it's a good thing. So there's, it's adding this little added extra component of depth and dryness to the beer, which I think the, it needed with the amount of sweetness that's there. It's just rich, man. Decadent. Now I'm getting like a burnt molasses thing on top of a really big plum component. It's starting to verge towards that raisin any area of things the yeast still comes off dry and that subtle bit of oxidation which i think plays well it's a rich delicious well made one of if not the best let's go right there is this one of the better quads that i've had as of late is one of if not the best american quads i've ever had it's just as good as some of the best ones i've ever had regardless of country i'm not just saying that just because i just want to gush over this beer you know me if shit's okay, it's okay. If it's great, it's great. And if it's fucking phenomenal, it's phenomenal. This beer's fucking phenomenal. I, did age put it there? Did two years put it there? Maybe. But then again, just shows you the uh, the uh, the good the good things about a uh, cellar and stuff. Because man, God, I really want to try this fresh. I can probably never make it again. I think their whole like they call it their cellar series. Cellared annual oil. I think that's just, they pick a different style every year. Um, but yeah, absolutely delicious. Fantastic. One of the best I've had in quite some time. And it's it's giving you such richness and boldness without any other trickery. There's no, as far as I could tell, taste and read on the label. No additional adjuncts outside of the core five of your Belgians, which would be your core four plus your Belgian candy sugar. There's no barreling. There's none of that. It's rich. It's bold. It's fantastic. Um, bag and availability, I have no idea. If this beer is less than 20 bucks a bottle, take all of my fucking money. Um, if it's more, I'm still okay with that. Once you get above 30, 35 bucks, I'm going to have a problem with it, but I probably still buy it. Um, uh, I assume it's brewery only. If this sits on shelves and poo poo on you people on, down there in Louisiana, not buying every square inch of this fucking beer, and leave you with if you like what will you like this? If you like good beer, if you like Belgian beer, if you like quads. If you like Belgian quads, and if you like Belgian beers, and if you like good beer. We'll go for full circle on that. It's just a really good beer. Listen, if you don't like this beer, I can kind of get it. Especially if, you, one, you don't like beer, or you just like hazies and pastry stouts, and you don't like anything but that, because that's all you know. Um, I can get you not liking it, but that's not, you don't like, how do I put it this way? You don't not like it you just don't know enough to like it wow that's the fucking shittiest shit i've ever said uh you would like this let's say if all you like is you like beer but you like new school new money shit all the hazies and the stouts you will not like you might not like this now but in five to ten years you will love this beer so you don't even know you like it yet so if you like good beer you like this beer 
Done it done. So there you go. Another review in the books. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive if you want to te- check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a beautiful American-born Belgian-style beer right now. Hope we'll see you next time. Cheers.